Welcome back to strategiccorporateresearch.org. In this video, we're going to look at the Dun & Bradstreet report. Publicly traded firms are required to disclose a great amount of information on a regular basis to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Privately held firms, however, have virtually no requirements to disclose any information beyond very basic registration information for the Secretary of State. The only place that most privately held firms disclose any information is to the Dun & Bradstreet Company. Dun & Bradstreet runs the business credit system, and privately held firms across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. regularly provide information to the DNB Company. Like the credit reports that we fill out before we purchase a car or purchase a home, Dun & Bradstreet provides this kind of information to businesses so they can make good decisions about extending credit to suppliers. Although the DNB reports are designed really for business operations, they are excellent corporate research tools and in many ways represent the primary document for researching privately traded firms. It is a bit surprising that these are not more commonly used in strategic corporate research. In part, I think this is because they are expensive. They cost between $200 and $300 a report, depending on the level of information you're interested in. But there really is no place else, even with sophisticated databases, to get this information. So for me, this is money very well spent. So let's take a look at a DNB report and see what's inside. From our homepage, if we scroll down to publicly traded firms, right on this landing page, we have a description of the Dun & Bradstreet report. They have over 195 million records available worldwide. And at the bottom of this paragraph, you can click for a sample report. Let's go take a look at that. Here you would, you would indicate sample report, comprehensive report. And this is what a Dun & Bradstreet report looks like. First and most importantly, on the upper left, you'll see the DUNS number. Every company has its own unique number. And a company that has many divisions will have a parent company number, and each of the divisions will have its own DUNS number. And this is a comprehensive report on a fictitious firm. And as you see right from the beginning at the top page in terms of the executive summary, it's some information on when the firm started, the number of employees, working capital, sales, net worth. Again, really important information that's really hard to find anywhere else for a privately held firm. And as we move down, we can see the beginning of a number of charts and graphs, which really form the basis of the DNB reports. They're providing a great amount of information on how well this company is performing financially and how well they pay their bills. This is important for us to look at. For example, before we decide to allocate funds to organize a firm, it's important to understand what their financial condition is. And a DNB report will give us an overall sense of a firm's finances. But if we scroll past these charts and graphs, you can see a variety of other information that's incredibly invaluable to us as corporate researchers. First, there's a section on business history. It tells us about who started the firm, uh, where they're from, and the principles involved in the firm. A little bit of information on business registration. Uh, they're registered in the state of California. And then there's some information on government activity, whether they are a borrower or a grantee. And in this case, this firm did receive a grant from the U.S. government. Uh, tells you whether they're a publicly traded firm, whether they're a contractor, importer. And on the right-hand side, whether they're women-owned or minority-owned. Really important information for us to have in building a profile of the firm. Tells us a little bit about operational data and then provides industry data with both the SIC and the NAICS codes. Going down the page, they provide a bit more information on the family tree. And as you can see, this company has a parent company and several subsidiaries, um, each of which will have its own DUNS numbers. Now, in the next section, they're providing information on their financial statements. And I want to note from the very beginning that this is not very common in DNB reports. It's unusual to get this level of data. Again, I think DNB put it in their sample to illustrate what can be available. On the left-hand side, you first see a three-year comparative statement, which looks at their financials over a three-year period. On the right-hand column, they provide a number of key business ratios. Again, this is very important financial information. As I've mentioned, this is rare to have in most DMB reports, but if you're able to get this kind of financial analysis, again, this is invaluable as a corporate researcher. 
Moving down the page, you can also see their public filing summary. And here you can see if there have been any judgments or any liens, any suits or any UCC statements. And here you can see detail on the judgments and on the liens. And again, it might be an, in, an individual who's bringing a judgment. It might be another firm. It could be issues of discrimination. It could be in a number of different areas, but this is invaluable information for you to find out about the firm. And then at the bottom here, you see actually their records of the UCC filings. You could, of course, get this from the Secretary of State, but this is conveniently provided for you right in the DMV report. But I think you can see how powerful this report is for looking at a privately held firm. And even though there's a cost involved, it's a very inexpensive way to gather a great amount of information on a privately held firm. I hope you found this video useful.